All right. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I see people are starting to join us for tonight's conversation. Amen. Uh, thank you, Kiwi, for actually sharing uh, this scope with your followers. Amen. Um, if you are watching and you think that this is something that uh, somebody will be blessed by hearing, then please take the opportunity to share with your followers on uh, Twitter. You can share with your followers on Facebook as well. Amen. I truly appreciate that. Uh, Y'all see, I got the ponytail thing going on today. Amen. A lot of people rarely see me with my hand in a ponytail, but it's just one of those type of days. Amen. Uh, many of us are preparing for this blizzard that we are about to have. I mean, we really can't complain because we have had a wonderful fall and winter so far. Amen. But it's about to hit us. So, you know, many of us going to be inside the house uh, uh, with cabin fever for a while, even for those, and I'm going to get into the scope, but even for those that are in the metropolitan area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, I know in the DC area in Maryland, they already said that the Metro buses, uh, will be shut down starting, uh, tomorrow evening all the way until Monday. And so, uh, it's going to be something, but Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. And so, I'm so glad that you all actually took the time to join me tonight. Uh, some of you all may be follow, uh, first time um, following me. I am Tanya Mitchell. I am the founding pastor of Nothing But The Truth Ministries, located in Clinton, Maryland. Amen. Nothing But The Truth Ministries. Amen. Truth stands for total reliance upon the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, last night, uh, I was on a scope with the wonderful man of God, Apostle John Eckert. Um, and uh, I was watching the questions that was going by. He had an open Q&A session with individuals, and I was surprised, first of all, because I, it was over a 1,000 people on there. I finally got in where I could actually type a question on his page, and uh, he actually answered the question that I actually typed in. Um, and so even for those of you all that may be tuning in tonight, if I am not following you, Amen. Yes, he, he wrote a book on prophecy, A Prophet Arise. Amen. He has a whole lot of books. But on here, you can comment and talk back to me if I am following you. If, you, if I'm not following you, you don't have the ability to be able to comment uh, on this scope. And that's because you have so many crazy people on Periscope that like to be perverted and be distractions when things are actually going forward. That's why I have it set up like that. But as I was watching his scope last night, um, uh, bless the Lord, Angelita. Um, as I was watching his scope last night, you know, so many people had questions that was going through uh, asking about how do you get free from cigarettes? How do you get uh, over addictions? How do you get for how do you get delivered? You know, and I'm, I was listening to that and I said, you know, that's something that I'm going to get on to talk about because some of us probably wonder that a lot about. Church people, let's just say, we know they've been saved for years, but yet they still seem to be in bondage to the same thing. And so it makes you say, what's up with deliverance? Is the word of God able to truly deliver us from the things that we are in bondage to? Yes, it is. But deliverance is a process and it is something that you must do in order to maintain your deliverance. And so based upon the questions that was going forth, and even with some of the stuff that I actually see, I say, you know, let's talk about this deliverance thing tonight. So if you're on here and you have questions in the midst of me teaching, because I am going to be teaching, if you have questions, don't hesitate to put them on the screen. Amen? And so when I think about it, there's nothing new underneath the sun. That's what the Word of God lets us know uh, in Ecclesiastes. Amen? Um, and when you think about believers in the body of Christ, hey there, woman of God, glad to have you on. Uh, when you think about believers in the body of Christ, I would say you have like two types of people in the body of Christ, so to say. Amen. You have individuals that are always tripping, always getting off course. Every time you turn around, hey there, Walters. You know, you have those type of people in, in the church. They're there, but they never seem stable. You know, they're always at the altar for the same thing over and over and over again. Then you have a group of believers that seem to, you know, be grabbing hold of the word, applying it, and not constantly overtaken by their flesh and sinful ways. And so, 
As I said, you got those two type of people in the church today. And so what's the difference between those two when you think about it? Those that are not at the altar constantly, that are not constantly struggling with their flesh, that seem to really be walking this thing out versus those that we may want to deem carnal Christians. What's the difference? Well, guess what? I'm going to talk about the difference between them because maintaining the deliverance is one of, is the major difference between these two individuals, they, these two types of people. What you got to understand, deliverance is not a one-time event. Let me tell you, you can come to the altar, somebody can lay hands on you, saturate you with oil, you can flop on the floor, foam at the mouth, have all kind of demons cast out of you, and guess what? Leave that church service, go on about your merry business, and find yourself in the same situation. Why? There is a reason, amen? Because number one, after the flopping and the foaming and the casting out and the slapping of the oil, you know, I'm just being extreme, but these are some of the things that take place. But after those things take place, there is something that you must do in order to stay on the right track, okay? So so that thinking that it's just a one-time thing, I'm free and I'm over and that's all that's going to be, no, 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 there's work to do. And so deliverance isn't a one-time event. It is an ongoing process. When you think about a process, a process is a series of actions with continuing. Amen? Say continuing in your home where you are. But it is a series of actions with continuing activity or function. It is something going on. Amen? And so deliverance has different phases. Amen? First of all, deliverance means to be set free. Praise the Lord, Prophet Walsh. I'm glad you joined us. Amen. Uh, deliverance means to be set free. It means to be rescued from when you think about the word deliverance. And so the first phase of deliverance comes with you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. <clears throat> At that moment, you are delivered from the gates of hell. Because of your decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are delivered from eternal, eternal damnation. That's just step one. Amen. There's so much more that you need to do after you accept Christ. And so when you think about it, you got to understand the blood of Jesus Christ. It rescued us. Amen. We thank God that we know that when we transition from this life to the next life, that we will spend eternity with our heavenly father because of the blood that was shed on Christ or Calvary because of what Jesus Christ did. Let me explain that because so many people go back and forth and back and forth with salvation. Amen. I'm going to stay focused, but I got to say this. Christ paid it all. He did it on the cross. Amen. And so when you think about that, you have individuals that are tormented in their mind because they think as soon as they do something wrong, now they're no longer saved. You have preachers that are teaching this from the pulpit. And if you think about that mindset, that your actions, your sinful act, unsaves you, then what really saved you was you cleaning yourself up and getting yourself together. You could never be good enough to make yourself available, acceptable to get into heaven. No, no, no. We can't do it. See, because if it's all about, well, I know I'm going to heaven because I don't smell, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't fornicate, I don't cuss, I don't do this and I don't do that. Uh, because I don't do all these things, now I know I'm saved. Then you saved yourself. See, we need to understand Jesus paid the price on the cross for all of your sins, past, present, and future. So if you understand that, the moment that you cuss, Amen. Because cussing is a sin. Let's be for real. Let no corrupt communication come out your mouth. So the moment you cuss, if you don't have the right doctrine in your life, you'll think, oh, I'm not saved. The moment you have sex with somebody and you're not married and you know you're a believer with the messed up doctrine, you'll think, because I slept with somebody, I'm no longer going into heaven. That's when you have a salvation understanding according to your own works. It's all about Christ. So let me get back to my point. And so the blood has rescued us 
from ever having to experience eternal damnation and separation from God. Yes, I mean, the bottom line is when you do wrong, repent. Turn away from that sin. Turn back to God. Don't stay there. See, many of us can't walk in deliverance because we're staying caught up in the very thing that our flesh likes. You know, we're not repenting. We do a lot of, Lord, forgive me. I know it was wrong. A lot of people ask God to forgive them, but a lot of people don't repent. So they ask him to forgive him over and over and over again, but they never, ever change their ways. Amen. And so repenting is turning away from that thing. It's not just realizing that it's wrong. It's turning away. And so when you think about it, Romans chapter six, verse 23, it says the wages for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, it's a gift. It is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so accepting Christ is the first part of getting deliverance. Phase two of getting deliverance is you need to do away with the body of sin. I want to read Romans chapter six from you. And I'm reading it from the living translation. Amen. And it says, well, then shall we keep on sinning so that God can keep on showing us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Certainly not. Should we keep on sinning when we don't have to? Because you have to understand, child of God, you don't have to keep on sinning. It is a choice. And so it says, should we keep on sinning when we don't have to? For sin's power over us was broken when we became Christians and were baptized to become part of Jesus Christ. Through his death, the power of your sinful nature was shattered through his death. Again, what he did. And it says, your old Sin loving nature was buried with him by baptism when he died. And when God the Father with glorious power brought him back to life again, you were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. And so for have you for you have become a part of him, and so you died with him, so to speak, when he died. And now you share his new life and shall rise as he did. Your Old evil desires were nailed to the cross with him. That part of you, amen, that loves to sin was crushed and fatally wounded so that your sin loving body is no longer under sin's control. If your sin loving body is controlling you, it's not. That what Christ did on the cross was in vain and not working. It's again because of your choices. But we have been given what we need to in order to walk out our deliverance continually. And so it says, so that your sin loving body is no longer under sin control, no longer needs to be a slave to sin. For when you are deadened to sin, you are free from all of its allures and all its power over you. When you are dead into it, when you are no longer drawn away by it, amen, it no longer controls you. And it says, and since your old sin loving nature died with Christ, we know that you will share his new life. Christ rose from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died once for all to end sin's power. But now he lives forever in unbroken fellowship with God. So look upon your old sin nature as dead and unresponsive to sin. And instead, be alive to God. Alert to him. Not what your flesh want to do. Not what your own desires want to do, but we need to be alert to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do not let sin control your puny body any longer. Do not give into its sinful desires. Do not let any parts of your bodies become tools for wickedness to be used for sinning, but give yourself Completely to God. One thing about it. Your body. Cannot do anything. 
without your mind and your spirit being in agreement with it. See, that's why it's so important to get your mind in check and in order. Because when you begin to have proper thinking, even though the flesh is kicking and want to do some things, you're strong enough in your mind, your spirit is strong enough because you're alert to God that you shut your body down. It can't control you. Your flesh may want to go see Joe or Lucy or whoever, but in your mind, you better know I'm not married. I'm a single man or woman of God. And my body wants to go fulfill its lust. But my mind is saying no. And so when you shut down the signals that your body is sending or the words that the enemy would like to plant into your mind, when you take authority and shut it down, then guess what? Your car ain't going to your body ain't going to jump in the car and go by itself. You have to give it permission to do what it want to do. But guess what? Get this in order. Everything will be okay. And so we have the power to overcome the body of sin that we are in. We're going to always have struggles. We're going to always have temptations as long as we are in these bodies. But again, we have the power to shut it down. No longer do we want to be slaves of unrighteousness, but we need to be slaves of righteousness. And so when you think about it, shutting down the flesh and what it wants to do, guess what? This is the part of deliverance that takes a lot of effort on our part. Because for so long, we did what we wanted to do. It's not easy when temptation is on every side. I mean, I don't care where you go. You're going to always be tempted to do something that is outside of the will of God. Even if the temptation is only in your mind. See, because guess what? Some of y'all can sit right in your own house by yourself and have all kind of wicked temptations going on in your mind. The bottom line is, this is where we have to fight and we have to be determined that we're going to keep on fighting. I don't care if a temptation knocks on your door a hundred times in a day, guess what? Don't open the door. I always tell people, if somebody come knocking at your house, you're not going to automatically just open up that door. First of all, if you got a peephole on your door, you want to look out the peephole and see who it is. If it's somebody on the other side that you do not recognize, you're not going to open the door. You may begin to ask them some questions to see what it is that they actually want. When you realize, oh, no, I'm not interested in what you're offering on the other side of that door, you won't open the door. But see, the thing is, temptation come knocking on our door. We look out the peephole. We see the temptation. We identify the temptation. But guess what we want to do? We want to open up the door with a little crack and say, hey, can I help you? Let me tell you something. That's the foolish thing that we do right there. Why would you even open the door? Because all the enemy needs is a crack to enter in. If you open up that crack, he going to slide on up in that camp and have a field day. So guess what? You have to be willing to fight in this part of deliverance. It's hard. Even when you think about it, stuff just constantly pulling on you all the time. It's hard, but it's not impossible. Amen. We got the Holy Spirit and we got God on our side. And so at the end of the day, it's about choice. We choose to obey and we choose to disobey. And the sad part about the body of Christ is that we choose which sins we are okay with. See, we may say, well, you know what? I don't have a problem with doing this. But that sin right there, oh no, I would never ever do that. And so we pick and choose our sin. And I always tell myself, my church is, I say, guess what? Sin is sin. You can't choose the consequences of the sins that you do. Amen. Some sins have more consequences than others. But in our mind, we think this ain't that bad. So we continue to do that. But we're looking somebody crazy because of what they do. When in God's eyes, all sin is sin. And so the battle between the flesh and the spirit will not end as long as we are in these earthly bodies. And so we need to accept that and we need to stop living in denial. I don't care how Holy Ghost filled and sanctified you think you are. Guess what? You still have struggles from time to time because you're in the flesh. 
And so does the fight get easier? I always tell people yes. Let me tell you something. I am not in a constant battle 24 hours every single day with trying to keep my flesh under subjection. Now, when I first got saved, oh, the battle was on for real. Because I was fresh out of the world, so used to doing any and everything that I wanted to do. So when I got saved, you know, it was, it was an ongoing fight. But the more I grew spiritually, the more I obeyed the word of God, the more I stopped feeding my flesh what it wanted, then guess what? The struggle wasn't as intense. So I'm not a person that's constantly like, you know, oh God, please, please keep me today. I just don't want to do this, you know, and things of that nature. Come on now. It gets easier. It gets easier when you walk in obedience. Amen. Thank you, lady. And so it gets easier, but don't ever get to the point that you become cocky. See, because that's what some people do. See, I am not a person that will ever say never. Meaning, oh, I will never, ever do this. You want me to tell you why? Because soon as you put that in the atmosphere, the minute the enemy is on a mission at that very moment to get you to do that very thing that you said you would never do. Oh, I have strong desires not to do certain things, but I never set myself up and say, oh, I'll never do that. Because I know that when you get to a point where you become cocky, when you don't off, always watchful, next thing you know, the enemy done tripped you up. You got that right. You said it, woman of God. He will trip you up. So don't get cocky and in chill mode because guess what? Satan will hit you with a sucker punch, amen? And the next thing you know, you are spiritually dazed trying to figure out what in the world happened. You know how it is if you're in the boxing ring and you good for a minute and you all dipping and dabbing and, you know, doing all that stuff. You know, you think you are right, you know, because you feel like, yeah, your opponent ain't got nothing on you. So you up in that joint real cocky, right? Next thing you know, out the blue, bam, he come with an uppercut. You all like, what in the world didn't happen? See, because you can be so cocky, because you can become so self-righteous, you will get to a point where you think you are exempt certain things, exempt from certain things. Each one of us are one step away from falling. It's all about making one decision to say yes to the flesh. Amen. You say, where did that come from? That pious mindset? I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, and I think sometimes what happens is, we get to a point, we feel like I've been saved for so long that I should never, ever have this struggle anymore. Amen. You said the Lord blocking so much. We feel like I should never have this struggle anymore because I've been saved for 20 years. Amen. Oh, Pastor, this is Sinley. My phone won't allow me, but I'm watching. Oh, bless you, baby. All right. I'm glad you tuned in. And so we got to understand, yes, we're not untouchable. Um, you know, you're never too far in your Christian walk where you are off limits from the enemy. You are going to always be on the enemy's hit list. And if you keep that on the forefront of your mind, I don't care what your title is. I don't care if you're apostle, chief apostle, bishop, prophet, pastor, evangelist, uh, uh, elder, so-and-so, deacon, brother, mother, missionary. You are never off the enemy's hit list. His number one desire, because he cannot snatch you out of the hands of God, he knows that you've been sealed until the day of redemption. Because he cannot snatch you, he wants to cause you to live a life as a Christian that's not victorious. She said bishop twice removed. So he don't want you to be victorious. So he's going to constantly put the press on you. He's going to constantly try to get you to go against what you know that you should do. Cause guess what? You will be a person that will cause other people to stumble and fall. You not walking according to the word of God will be an individual that will cause unbelievers to say, if you are Christian living like that, why would I want your God? And so the enemy will do all that he can to keep us from being victorious. But the devil is a liar. And when we understand that he never sleeps, come on, y'all. The enemy does not sleep. He is on the prowl 24-7. Amen. He doesn't get tired. We get tired. 
And a lot of times when we get tired of fighting, that's when he really want to come in for the punch. Amen. But you got to get in that corner. You got to allow your hype man in the corner to, to give you some words to tell you. Get back out there. Get you a little of that living water and get back in that ring and do what you got to do. Because when you're tired, just like a boxer, when a boxer realizes that his opponent is tired, trust me, his thing is he trying to come in for the kill. He don't want the bell to ring because if he can get him to a point where he just going and going and going and going, he know he can take him out. And so that's right. You don't want to open that door. You said job one, going to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. Exactly. And so don't get cocky and in chill mode because, as I said, Satan will hit you with a sucker punch. You'll be dazed. And next thing you try to figure out what in the world happened. And so our biggest dilemma with deliverance is fighting. Think about it. You never had to fight against the flesh before you got saved. Why? Because the flesh did what it wanted to, do, wanted to do. Your spirit wasn't in touch with God's spirit. You was on automatic pallet for the devil. So we never had to fight against the flesh when we weren't saved. We did whatever the flesh wanted us to do. The flesh was not our enemy, y'all. It was our friend. We was on one accord with the flesh. Amen. Think about some of the things that you did. Oh, y'all was on one accord with some stuff. And so, let's be for real. Think about this in a natural sense. The only time you didn't sleep with somebody, for those of you all that were not uh, virgins when you got married and when you got saved, you was already out there. Some of y'all saved and still sleeping around. Think about it. Let's be for real. The only time you did not sleep with somebody when you wasn't saved, amen, that wasn't your spouse was simply because you did not want to. That's all. If you ain't want to. But if it was somebody that you wanted to sleep with, you didn't allow anything to hold you back. You simply did what you wanted to do. So now that you're saved, now that you're born again, now that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, all of a sudden this conflict comes up. Oh man, I used to go sleep around and it didn't bother me. Now when I do it, something takes place. You said Matthew 4, right after the Lord said, this is my son, I'm well pleased, then the wilderness and then Satan. Yes, yes. He was thrown right into temptation, amen. When he was Before he was launched into his ministry full time, he had a wilderness moment, a wilderness moment. And so most prone for attack after high moments. Yes, yes, we got to understand that. And so now that you are actually saved, there's a conflict on the inside of you. Because now you know that there are certain things that don't line up with God. It was all flesh. So now that we are saved, we have to fight against what the flesh likes. And we have and the things that we've been used to doing. Amen. Let me tell you something. Can somebody tell me on here? And I want somebody to respond. Tell me why we sin. Somebody tell me. I need somebody to type. Tell me why we sin. I just want to see what y'all think. <laughs> why we, Why do we sin? On lust. Uh-huh. Amen. Come on. Somebody else type something on the screen. Why do we Because we like it. Bingo. That's it right there. We go against, that's right, to please the flesh. We sin to please ourselves. Yes. Guess what? There's some sins that you just won't do because you don't like them. We only struggle with the sins that we like, y'all. Let's be for real. That's why it's a struggle. Because we like it. Okay? Yes, the flesh enjoys sin. And so you cannot maintain your deliverance unless you are in a posture to continue to fight. To know it's going to be a fight. You better fight. Amen. And so what does it mean to maintain? Yes, for the pleasure. If it wasn't pleasurable, we wouldn't want to continue to engage in it. And what the enemy does, he wins us with the pleasure of a sin. Then when we are in bondage to that thing and addicted to that sin, no matter what it is, then it's no longer pleasurable, 
but the bondage is so heavy. See, that's the thing. It start off nice, but then it becomes a bondage. You're no longer doing it because you like it. You're doing it because you are in bondage, needing to be free. And so what does it mean to maintain? It means to sustain, yes, enslaved. It means to sustain against opposition or danger. You have to understand that Satan is our opponent. And you have to keep uh, uh, and continue to have, understand that he's constantly going to use different wiles to trip you up. Amen. So you got to stand strong. You got to know that he's the opponent. Amen. You know, he like to make you think you in control. And the thing is, you ain't in control. Oh, that joker, the enemy be having us like a puppet on the string sometime when we in bondage. It's like the very thing you don't want to do, that's what you end up doing. And so when you think about it, the enemy put the press on Jesus in the wilderness like the young lady brought him not too long ago. Just like he put the press on Jesus when he was in the wilderness, he going to do the same thing with us. Guess what? He came against Jesus the first time. Jesus, the enemy ain't go away. Jesus spoke the word, but that ain't stopped the enemy. He came with something else. He was like, Jesus spoke the word again. He came with something else. Finally, he said, you know what? I can't get this joker to bend. Let me go on up out of here. But it say until an opportune time. So what you got to understand is he going to put the press on you because he want to see where you at for real. See, the enemy want to know where you at for real, man or woman of God. Are you really one that stand on the word? Or are you just an individual that know the word, but you don't live the word? Okay? So you can't get around fighting. So he's going to keep trying. <laughs> and so what you got to understand, he'll leave for a minute. Things will be smooth for a minute. Then all of a sudden, out the clear blue sky, it's like, wait a minute, where this is coming from? Because he's trying to see where you at. Are you in a weak state? Are you going to give in this time? Keep on fighting. And so Christ stood strong. You say, past shows up out the blue to tempt you. You know it. Out the blue. You've been doing good, been having had a struggle with a certain thing for years. And all of a sudden, it can show up in a dream. Hello. See, let me tell you something, y'all. Y'all better know how to fight in your dreams. Amen. And if he did Jesus like that, you know he coming for us, right? So guess what? The enemy will come for you in your dreams. Let's just say if you was a person that used to like to get high. Amen. I was a person that used to use drugs. I've been clean for years, over 20 something plus years. Amen. But every now and then out the blue, do y'all know that joker will come and attack me in my dreams with drugs? And in the dream with the drugs, it's as if I always have the drugs, but I'm always trying to find a place to use the drugs. You want to know why? Because the Bible talks about making provisions to fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, in the dream, I got to make provisions to, first of all, engage in, in this thing that I know I don't need to be doing. So I'm constantly trying to find, where can I do it? Where can I do it? And when I understand this type of dream is going on, it's the enemy. I bind and I war in the spirit. See, that's what you got to get into to the place where you do. When he want to come with lustful dreams and different things of that nature, instead of embracing the dream that's tempting your flesh, realize what's going on and start going to war even in your dreams. Because if he cannot get you while you are up, he will definitely try to get you while you are asleep. And be careful what you watch and listen to and entertain. That's right. That's all part of maintaining your deliverance when I get these steps in just a second. That's definitely part of it. Not taking thoughts captive, understand, about imaginations. Right, you got to take them thoughts captive. You can't play with them. You can't, you can't ignore them. And I don't care if they come back to back. You got to keep fighting them. And so, Christ stood strong and fought with the word of God. And that's what we need to fight the enemy with too. Nothing else is going to work against the enemy. And so, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Amen? There are strongholds that need to come down, and they're only going to come down through you fighting with the mighty weapons of God. You can't take an AK-47 and kill a demon. It ain't going to work. You need to evict that joker with the power of God. When you think about it, to maintain also means to preserve from failure or decline. It's time out, people of God, for constantly backsliding over and over. I know the word said he's married to the backslider, but do you want to continue to take God's unconditional love for granted? I hope not. 
That's right. You got to guard your mind and your heart. And so we don't want to be in a place where we're constantly taking God for granted. Instead, we need to keep on pressing toward the mark. We need to continue to reach forward in our victory walk. And so, breaking news for those that might be a little confused. You can only maintain something that you have. Oh, let me talk about that. See, some people can't maintain deliverance because you ain't delivered. Hello? Can I say that one more time? Some people cannot maintain their deliverance because they ain't never got delivered. You can only maintain something that you have. Amen? And so some of you can't maintain deliverance in certain areas of your life because you've never been delivered with your dibbling and dabbling self. You always going back and forth. You ain't never really cut it off. You ain't never really stopped because you always dibbling and dabbling. That's why you ain't delivered. When you think about it, let's be honest today. You have not been delivered. Some people are still alcoholics. Amen. You ain't been delivered from that alcohol demon because you still get drunk on the weekends. Hello. It's Friday night. It's time to turn up. I'm going to turn up Friday. I'm going to turn up Saturday. But I'm going to praise the Lord on Sunday. No, you still in bondage to that alcoholic demon because you never ever stopped and cut it off. When you think about it, you haven't been delivered from your lust demons. Amen. <laughs> That, that's my grandson talking about hi grandma <laughs> hey there nothing and nothing out that's right we bank account not putting nothing in at all can't pull nothing out you gotta say it we gotta get delivered today, today amen and so when you think about it certain people haven't been delivered from lust demons because you know you know they think in their mind you know I'm delivered and they think that they delivered because they ain't had sex but yet they still dealing with incubus and succubus on a regular basis. Their mind is, is, is always overtaken with all kinds of negativity. Why? Because you may not have had sex with somebody, but you still watching porn every time you get an opportunity. You still masturbating. Amen. You still getting your freaky feels on every time you get a chance. Amen. But, but, and you want trying to figure out, you know, you know, you want to say you delivered from lust. No, you ain't. You ain't delivered from lust because you're still keeping those doors open. So you haven't been delivered from your lust demons because just because you've been celibate for three years. Hello? Because you got a whole bunch of Christians thinking that they all that, thinking they celibate. Half of you all celibate because you ain't got a man in your life. Can I just be for real? See, sometimes you got a woman that'll think, oh, well, I've been celibate for five years. Well, baby, let me ask you this. Have you been on a date in the last five years? A lot of times the answer is no. But then guess what? That's why you ain't drop your drawers for nobody. Hello? Sometimes soon as somebody come into your place that you like in your space, next thing you know, you done gave it up. Why? Because you ain't never got rid of that lust demon. Because even though you was by yourself for five years, you was doing everything underneath the sun by yourself. Amen? You was doing all kind of stuff to keep your mind stimulated in the wrong kind of ways. Amen. Street posting, almost naked pictures. Of, yes, on Facebook and some. Let me tell you something. There's some things you don't want to take a certain look. Sometimes you got friends on Facebook and trust and believe. I don't have a lot of friends on Facebook where I got to bind and come against what they actually showing in their timeline. People want to talk about all this bad stuff on Facebook. I don't have them type of friends. But every now and then, somebody may want to post a calendar or something like that. Let me tell you something. Oh, the eye candy may go through, but guess what? It'll keep on going. I'm not going to pause. I'm going to roll right on past. Because ain't nobody opening up no doors that are already closed down. Amen? And so we have to understand, you know, you can never get set free from the bondage of the enemy if you're still dibbling and dabbling. That's right, church folks. Church folks. Amen? Some of the stuff people post on their page make me say, I don't even want to see them. They can't preach to me. They can't sing to me. They can't do nothing for me. Amen. And so a lot of times you've never gotten free uh, uh, from the bondage of the enemy. And so do you realize that the only way to kill the flesh and destroy its power over you is you have to starve the flesh? Where is it at? I have something around here. I don't see it right here. Hold up. You have to starve the flesh. Right here. 
This is my book. Why do I keep falling? $15. You can get a copy today if you want. But there's a whole chapter in here on starving the flesh. See, this is a book of deliverance that deals with all types of sexual immorality, a lot of the things that people struggle with in the body of Christ. And there's a whole chapter on starving the flesh. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get free. Guess what? If you are feeding your flesh, it's going to remain powerful. You have to starve it. Do you realize that if you was to stop eating yourself as a person, you refuse to eat no more, you would cease to exist. You would die. So if you look at yourself as that sinful thing that you like, every time you go and put something in it, it's keeping it alive. You have to get to a point, I don't want this thing to live no more, so let me stop feeding it. Because what you feed the most is going to dominate. So if you want to get delivered from whatever your issue may be, stop feeding it. That weaning stuff is a joke. How am I going to wean myself off of weed if I went from seven days a week of getting high to only four days? Do y'all realize I'm still getting high if I'm doing that? Hello? The only way you're going to stop getting high is to stop. You want to know how you're going to stop smoking the cigarettes? Put them down. The nicotine may call you. You want to do it? The only, I mean, oh, you're going to go through the withdrawals. Let me tell you, people cannot get free from addictions because they cannot go through the withdrawals of whatever it may be. I don't care if it's sexual addiction, food addiction, drug addiction, porn addiction, whatever the case may be. Whenever you stop something, that you have been used to doing, you will have withdrawals. Consecrate self, sometimes fast. They meant from media, music, videos, TVs. Yes, you have to. But the reality of it is, you have to stop. It's no if, ands, or buts about it. That is the only way. And then when you get the Joneses, as we call it, amen? <laughs> yes, stuff will be crying out loud when you kill it. But when you get the Joneses, when that press is on you, when you feel, you know, here it is, you trying to leave that joke alone. Here it is, you pick up the phone, go to doubt, put it down. Your mind say, well, you know, because you make up excuses. I think I left something over his house that I need to get. So you pick up the phone. No, no, no. Don't pick it up. Let it go. You want to, 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 to engage in all these things, but go through the withdrawals, okay? Once you go through the withdrawals, you'll be free. I mean, come on now. You, that, that, that thing will no longer have a hold on you. You won't have the, 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 the fleshly shakes anymore, so to say. You know, you got to get to a point where you shut it down. And so, uh, you got to starve it. And so, in phase two of deliverance, amen, doing away with the body of sin, it requires you to deal with your own personal demons, amen? It ain't worth it, you know? It ain't worth it at all. And so... When you think about it, your own personal demons, guess what? Strong man is his name and strongholds are his gain. You want to know how, how you want to know how you have strongholds if you have any? All you got to do is think about the word of God. It says, so the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate, but I know that what I'm doing is wrong. You ain't dumb. You know straight up that what you're doing is wrong. You get to a point where you know you are at a place where you no longer enjoy it. You hate it, but you tell yourself, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. But then that's the very thing you end up doing. You make all these oaths, all these pacts with yourself. I ain't going to do it. And you do that because you know it's wrong. But then you end up doing it anyway. And the very thing that you know you should do, that's the very thing that you don't do. And so it goes on to say, so I am not the one doing the wrong. It is the sin that is living in me that does it. It says, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't do it. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Come on now, yes. Sin is torture. Torture. 
That thing will take you through when you're in bondage to something. When you're in bondage to a strong man. And trust me, a strong man ain't always the stuff that you see, the typical stuff. Smoking, drinking, things of that nature. Your strong man can be jealousy. Your strong man can be anger. You get to a point, you don't want your anger to always control you. But every time you turn around, you flying off the handle. You don't want to be jealous, but every time you turn around, your eyes turn it green. That's a strong man. The very thing that you don't want to do, that's the very thing that you keep on doing. That's how you know whether or not you got a strong man. Because it is that thing that every time you turn around, you are constantly asking God to help you with this thing. It's the very thing that you know ain't right, but yet you keep doing it anyway. That's how you know you got a strong man. And that's the joker that you need to deal with. And that's the demon that you need to get delivered from. Because guess what? A lot of times a strong man has been there for years. Come on now. Let me tell you. People that are saturated and overtaken with lust. Guess what? It ain't happened all of a sudden. People have been dealing with lust problems for years. So guess what? If they started being sexually loose when they were young. And then they're 45 years old. Guess what? Do you realize how strong? That joker done got over the years So it ain't gonna come out with a Oh Lord God free me right now Oh it's gonna take much more than that You stay dealing with it at this very moment Amen Cause the bottom line is You gotta realize This thing been here for years And it ain't trying to go nowhere But you gotta get to the point Where you sick and tired of that thing Controlling and dominating your life You gotta get to a point Where you say I want to be delivered And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get delivered But the strong man ain't gonna roll out that easy You gotta make up your mind That you gonna fight You gotta make up your mind That you gonna shut stuff down when it come to you You gonna have to do things differently People of God why is it that we think that we could do the same thing over and over and over again and think we're going to get different results? That is insanity. You keep doing the same thing and ending up in the same place, but yet you're saying, Lord God, I just want to be delivered. What you doing different? And so that strong man is ruthless. And even when I think about it, when the word of God says some things only come out through prayer and fasting. Come on now, it's a lot of work. That thing is taking deep root in your life. It has been there for many years. There's a lot of work that you have to do to get rid of it. And so you can't get tired of working. You can't get tired of fighting. Praise God. Thank you, Lady Dockery. You can't get tired of fighting. You got to be willing to keep working at it over and over and over again. But you got to first realize that you got a problem. Too many people think they okay. And if you think you okay in your mess, you see no need to get delivered. But you got to constantly, that's right, constantly work at it and keep on fighting. But if you think you are right, you don't see no need to get delivered. Everybody else around you can smell you and see that you stink. Everybody else around you can smell that there's a foul aroma that's going up to the nostrils of God from you. But you can't smell it. Hello? Come on now, you ever met somebody? Everybody in the room can smell them. But they can't smell itself. You want me to tell you why you can't smell your own funk? Hello, I'm going to tell you. Because you have become immune to it. You have become immune to your mess. That's why you are comfortable with it. Everybody else around you is repulsed. But you stink. But you can't smell it. Because it has become a way of life for you. And that's how it is when you have a strong man. That's operating in your life. Keeping you in bondage. It's so much a part of you. That you don't even realize. That you have an issue. And so. We need to get free. And so guess what? Everybody's strong man is different. Your strong man may not be lust. Your strong man may not be drugs or alcohol. You may be a person to deal with greed. Hello. That's a strong man. You deal with greed. Some of us are so overtaken with greed that, that that's, that's the very thing that drives us. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And so sometimes when you're greedy, you're willing to do anything to get what it is that you love. 
You will compromise, steal, lie, connive, and some rob God. Hello, all the thieves in the temple. Y'all know it's a lot of thieves in the temple, right? A whole lot of people robbing God, amen? Ain't even got a gun, but they sure enough robbing them. Hello. But your stronghold may not be lust, drugs, or alcohol. It may be greed. It may be gluttony. Come on now. You may be a person that every time you open up your mouth, your language is lying. Hello. You don't know how to tell the truth. Hello. Come on now. It could be selfishness. Selfish to the bone. Arrogant. Thinking you all that and some untouchable. Come on now. These strongholds got to be, got to go. It could be anger, yes, manipulation, rejection, self-pity, stealing, pride, jealousy, divination, hatred, unforgiveness. We can have all kinds of strong men that are holding us down, that are keeping us in bondage, that we need to get free from. And so whatever your issue may be, know that the strong man must be bound by someone stronger and that someone is Jesus. Because even when you think about the word of God. In Luke chapter 11 verse 14. It says and he was casting out a demon. And it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled. But some of them said hey. He cast out demons by Beelzebub the ruler of demons. Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against the house falls. If Satan is also divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Hello, let me tell you, Satan ain't trying to cast out Satan. Amen. You know, uh, uh, Satan ain't trying to have his imps and things to be free. No, he ain't going to try to get rid of them. He want them to stay right there. He want them to get stronger. Amen. And so when you think about it, in order to take over the strong man's house, again, somebody even more stronger has to be able to come and bound the strong man. Let me tell you something. You don't have the power to do it on your own. That's right. Like a legion. They have a military order. But you don't have the power to bind the strong man on your own. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together they need your obedience. If you have your obedience working with their instructions. Then you will be able to overpower the strong man that has been resident for so many years in your life. But too many of us got our own plan. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I told an individual, I said, I can't help you to get delivered because you have your own way in how you think your deliverance is supposed to go. So if you got the perfect plan, then why you ain't deliver yourself all these years? Hello? You don't have the master plan. The master has the master plan. You just must be willing to listen and obey. And sometimes he will put people in your life who are anointed for deliverance. Amen. I'm a deliverance minister. Amen. I know that. There are some things that God has used me in uh, uh, to help people to set free. Deliverance is my passion. Hello. My church is nothing but the truth ministries, a church of deliverance and discipleship. I have a passion for people getting delivered. I, I'm, God uses me with the ability to discern spirits. Amen. I have the gift of discerning spirits. I can see when certain things are operating. And guess what? If this is my specialty, then you got to get to a point that you trust the God in me. See, if I'm going to go have brain surgery, I don't want a heart surgeon to operate on me. I want the best brain surgeon that there is. But if you are not a brain surgeon and you need the surgery and you come to me for brain surgery, all I need you to do is lay on the table and let me do what I'm supposed to do. But no, people today, they don't have the skills. They don't know what it takes to do the surgery, but they want to tell you how to deliver them. They want to know why they still ain't delivered. I ain't got that type of time, y'all. Let me tell you, time is too short. Because if a person really wants to be delivered, but yet they don't apply any of the things that will help them to be delivered, don't keep coming, crying to me about your same old issues. If you're not willing to apply what has been spoken. 
God created pastors. And if you feel God had you there, then you got to obey them as the voice of God. I said this on, I think on Sunday. I said, come on now. If you trust your spiritual leader, the key word is trust them. And if you go to them for wisdom and counseling and they say something to you because they have your best interest at heart, they see it from a different perspective than you. Why can't you just trust them? People don't trust those that they are connected to and submitted to. But yet, they always want to come to you for advice. I always say it now. You ain't got my ear like that. I'm sorry. Because when I discern where you really are, I ain't wasting my time. And it's as simple as that. And so, your stronghold may be any of the things spoken. But you are the one that has to be able to allow the Spirit of God to take total control. Amen. You say you trust me with your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the strong man is those. And that's hard to walk away. But you can help. You can't help unless they're ready. That's right. You can't help anybody unless they are ready. Guess what? Anybody can change, but you can't change nobody. Can I say that again? Anybody has the capability of changing but you can't change anybody. Some are there but are not submitted. Exactly, apostle. They're there but not submitted at all. And guess what? As the spiritual leaders, we know who they are. <laughs> we know who you are. Amen? <laughs> no matter what your lips may say or no matter how faithful you may be and show up and things of that nature, we know when you ain't really sus submitted. And guess what? People struggle with submission. Because by nature, we are people that want to be in control of everything we do. And so it's hard for us to do this Jesus thing that causes us to submit to others. And so when you're not connected, you're out of order. And you can tell that's right. And then pride is set in. And so the strong man is those unclean spirits that have been residing in you for years that don't want to go. He don't want to go. The strong man, your strong, strong man, uh, uh, controlling demons don't want to go. Those stronghold ways that you flowed in for so many years, they don't want to go. They're comfortable. They're content. Amen. And so let's talk about, as I prepare to close, let's talk about how to maintain your deliverance. Amen. Stubborn. He knows his position. That's right. And so deliverance takes place. Amen. People are truly set free. There are times when people are set free. Deliverance takes place. Can I tell y'all this? Let me tell you something. When a man been clean, it comes back stronger with no mind to leave. That's right. Let me tell you this. I've cast out many demons throughout my years of ministry. I love casting out demons. Amen. I'm just being honest. The bottom line is when God allowed me to see demonic spirits many, many years ago, my thing was, God, I don't just want to see them. I want to help people get free. And so I cast demons out of people as the Lord leads me to. I don't just go around casting spirits out of everybody just because I see them. I'll be casting out demons all the time. Hello? But I only cast them out as the Lord leads me to because deliverance is different types of deliverance, amen, uh, and things of that nature. But one thing I have come to understand and I know throughout the years is that uh there's oftentimes there's nothing wrong with the person that God is using to flow in deliverance. Meaning, I can cast the demons out. A person can be set free at that moment from them demons to a place where they are able to turn their life around and walk. Because y'all know some people, they can't even begin to, to walk spiritually stable until some demons are released from their life. I, I, it's just as simple as that. You may have to work on the other ones. As time goes on, but there are some that before they can even have any type of stable mind, some demons got to be cast out. And so, you know, the demons have been cast out, but then you turn around and you'll see these same people doing the same things that they did prior to having the spirits cast out of them. Guess what? It's not the deliverer's fault. Oftentimes, it's because what the person did after the demons was cast out. And so, people are truly set free, but oftentimes end up in back, back up in bondage. Because the Word of God tells us in Luke, it says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest. 
He been dwelling in you for so many years. He didn't got cast up out of you. Realized that you can't, he can't stay here anymore. <laughs> I think about the song, you abandoned me. Love don't live here anymore. See, it's, it's the demon saying, you done abandoned me. You done kicked me out. I can't stay here no more. So then he go out there into the wilderness trying to find somebody else to take up residence. Because guess what? Just because as a demon come out of you, he trying to find somebody else to go into. Because you better trust and believe. Demons get their best work done inside of a person. Hello? Demons operate outside of people. I have seen demons outside of a person's human body, not in a body. I've seen just demonic spirits in the atmosphere. But I've also seen demon spirits inside of people. They do their best work inside of people. They get more stuff done that way. So if they get cast out, they ain't trying to just be out. They need somebody else to go into. And so it said he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, oh, okay, I ain't found nobody out here that I can come into. He come up to sister so-and-so, realize she got that thing on lock. Ain't no entry way there. Say, I can't go there. He go over to brother so-and-so. Maybe I can find a place up in here. He see that joker got things on lock too. So guess what? Then he get to thinking, well, what am I going to do? And then he says, ha-ha, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to return to the house from which I came. He's going back to the individual that he was evicted from. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the state of that man is worse than the first. Amen. One thing about it. Part of maintaining your deliverance, you cannot remain clean but empty. Hello? Yeah, some things may have been swept out. Next time he's not planning on leaving. Hello? He said, oh no, I ain't leaving and I got some others with me. But you cannot remain clean but empty. See, when you have been overtaken by a strong man for so many years, when he is evicted from you, you must constantly fill yourself up with the word of God. Fill yourself up. With the power of God. Fill yourself up with prayer. You got to fill your house. With all the things that will be able to keep him out. <coughs> you have to become a fortress. Amen. <coughs> he got to be able to try and come back in there. And say ain't no room in here. There's no room in here. For me to dwell anymore. And so tell yourself. With everything, you know, you got to fill yourself with everything that's God. You have to watch what you watch. You can't constantly watch. Oh, my God. Let me just say it. You can't constantly watch all of these shows on TV where everybody freaking everybody doing everything. Nothing is monitored. Nothing is bleeped out. And you trying to figure out why you still saturated with lust. Look at what you're looking at. You can't sit there and look at the videos with all the girls bouncing around, bopping their booties, half dressed, and you trying to figure out why your wife or your boo ain't attracted to you no more because you constantly looking at some eye candy that you should not be seeing. And so the bottom line is you got to fill yourself with everything God. You have to watch what you watch. Amen. You got to watch what you listen to. Your ear gate. It is important that the right things come into your ear gate. You got to watch what you read. Hallelujah. You got to watch what you think about. You got to even watch what you talk about. Because sometimes your conversations can begin to stir up some stuff. You know, sometimes when your heart ain't right in some areas, all of a sudden you want to go have a conversation and say, so what you think about this person? And for real, because your spirit ain't right and because you ain't feeling that person, because you may be dealing in some jealousy and envy and anger and, 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 and covetousness and things of that nature. Next thing you know, you want to go try and drop some little demonic seeds to somebody else because you ain't right. What you thinking about this? Watch what you say. Watch your conversations. Be filled with the spirit instead of everything else. And then another way to maintain your deliverance is that you always have to remain on the lookout. See, the enemy likes fellowshipping with you. You and him was on one accord. Y'all had a thing going on. We got a thing going on. Everybody know me. I hear songs, right? But the bottom line is y'all had a thing going on. That's right. Them seeds of discourse. 
And so the enemy liked fellowshipping with you. Y'all was a team. Y'all worked well together. Come on, y'all. Let me tell you. I was a straight up bona fide soldier for the devil. And I know it. But guess what? When my life got turned around, I am a sold out soldier for Jesus Christ. And the devil don't like it. Because you know what he say? He look at me and he say, man, that was one of my top dogs right there. He was like, I could get her to do any and everything. But now that God then got a hold of her. Ain't nothing happening. So you got to realize, you got to always be on the lookout because he knew you was good. He knew you was good at what you did. And so his thing is, if he can get you back into the traps to carry out his work, that's what he want. Amen. Bless you, woman of God. And so the enemy like fellowshipping with you. So know that he will always keep trying to get you back on his side. To get you back till you begin to, to walk in those things that had you in bondage. Because he don't want you to be vi a victorious Christian. You know how it is in a football game. And they always train individuals. So you go from one team. You know, you was at one team. You decide to go to another team. But the one team that you left, they knew that you was a good asset. So they want to try to pay you more than the team that you currently with. Because they try to tempt you and make it pleasing and worthwhile to you. Guess what? He going to try to come with all type of stuff to get you out of order. But you got to make up in your mind, that's right, that he will stay under your feet. That's right, Brenda. You got to make up in your mind. And so you have to be an individual that watches and prays because you need to know that Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Another way, trying to put out our fire so you don't help somebody else get on fire. He don't, that's right. You know, he always want to put out your fire because if you on fire for God, that thing contagious. You're going to be, you know, getting other people on fire. He don't want that. He want to put out your flame. He wants you to walk around with a saint with a little teeny spiritual flicker. With a light that's almost about to go out. Hello? And so, no. Another way to maintain your deliverance is submit and resist. Amen? That's right. I said watch and pray. Amen? Always be on the lookout. Then you have to submit and resist. It's too late now. <laughs> you say, it's too late now. I know that's right. That's what you got to tell him. It's too late now. I'm God. He got me. <clears throat> and the thing is, it's one of those things we know that God got us. But unfortunately, as believers, we flip-flop. We'll get to the point where we ran well, but then what hindered you? See, because we don't continue doing the things that keep us. Amen. You know, you say the devil should have kept you while he had his hand on you, right? And so the thing is, we again become relaxed. We become arrogant and prideful. We think that we have arrived in different things of that nature. We think we got this Christian walk. We beyond falling. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to get to that place. Because he said, now I got them in a place where I can trip them up. Okay, so again, don't ever get cocky. He doesn't rest. He's always going to be trying. True, naturally and spiritually. Don't finish well and not consistent. And that's the problem. That's why we got so many back and forth saints in the body of Christ. Again, that's why you got so many people that don't even want to connect to the body of Christ. Don't want to be a part of God because they're looking at us. Hello, Christians that can't stand and live right for nothing. Okay? We know how to say what holy is, but we ain't living holy. Hello? And so, submit and resist. You have to submit first and foremost to God. Amen? Abandon your will in order to follow his, period. Your will ain't the right way. The safest place is in the will of God. Coward soldiers, I call them punks in the kingdom. And I say we got too many punks in the kingdom. That's always buckling under pressure. Don't want to fight. Don't want to resist the flesh. Always want to give in to it. And then wonder why we ain't where we need to be in God. Come on now. We got to get some stuff in order. I always tell people God ain't blessing no mess. It's a constant battle. We must always be prepared to fight the good fight. And that's what I said, Apostle Howard. I said, start now. I said, what we have to understand that this is a constant battle until the day we go home to glory. Amen. Till we receive our new heavenly bodies. As long as we in this corrupt, corroded flesh, there's going to be temptations on every side. But we have to stop giving in to them. Ooh. I can't stand to hear anybody say the devil made me do it. Because first of all, the devil can't make you do nothing. And guess what? God don't make you do nothing either. God gives you the ability to choose. 
And the devil allows you to choose whether you're going to do what he wants you to do or not. He don't make you. And so, so the thing is, the word of God says he always provides a way of escape. Boo, you just don't like the exit sign. Hello. Uh-huh. You just don't like the exit sign. So you stay and you do what you shouldn't do. But the way of escape is there. We can't say that, you know, uh, uh I don't know why I did it. Yeah, you do. You did it because you wanted to do it. Amen. But I don't care. In a matter of a split second, God has shown you a way to not do what's contrary to him. I don't care who you are. He always Shows you a way. I know that's right. Salida. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right or not, but hey. <laughs> and so, abandon your will in order to follow his. Resist the devil. Let me tell you something. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Hello? Um, you ain't going to be resisting the devil. It's a little too late to resist the devil when you butt naked, laid up in somebody's sheets, uh, 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 no, that ain't how you resist. You don't even put yourself in that position. Hello? And so submit to God. Say yes to his will. Resist the devil. Even though he's knocking again, you don't have to give in to him. To resist is to exert force in opposition. <laughs> hey, y'all, back in the day, this is what we used to do when we was young. And let's just say the little boy wanted to mess with us. Amen. And we'd be like, no, no, I don't want to, no. Come on now. You say people get so wrapped up in, emo in the emotion <laughs> of the battle that they are not fighting. That's right. But we say, no, no, I don't want to stop it, stop it. Come on now, ain't no power in that, no. You got to get to a point, you let somebody know straight up, no, it ain't happening. They'll know right then and there, but all that giggly smiling and no, no, come on now. The devil realized, oh, you want something for real. You want to play and tangle with me for real. He know that. He can tell in your response. So you got to be able to, you say, while wow, the clothes are coming. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. I don't want to. We can't do this because I know it ain't right. Please. Hello. And so resist the devil means to exert force in opposition. Take a stand. Hello? That's what the word resist means. It means to take a stand. People of God, it is time that we take a stand for righteousness. No matter what comes our way. Refuse to fall with everything inside of you. And when you do that, guess what? That joker gonna flee. He may go find somebody else to mess with, but he realized I ain't got nothing coming with sister or brother so and so. Because they standing strong. Then another way to maintain your deliverance is you need to cut people off. This is one of the biggest problems in the body of Christ. Sometimes before you get saved, all your boys that you hung out with, all your girls you hung out with, y'all was on one accord, birds of a feather flock together. Now that you done got saved, all the things that you all did together as a group, you can no longer do those things because it's contrary to what you should be doing. But you still want to hang out with them. You feel like, well, you know, we've been friends for so many long years. Okay, well, y'all used to go to strip club together. You going to still be going to the strip club, club man or woman of God? Y'all used to get high all the time. So what you going to do? Just go with them while they copping the drugs, sit in the house with them while everybody else getting high, but you ain't getting high? That's foolishness. Two walk, how can two walk together? You know, like two walk together. Lightness and darkness shouldn't be together. Light, those in the light shouldn't be with those in the dark. Amen? Sometimes you got to come out from amongst them. Women, let me tell you something. Men, let me tell you something. You got that one person in your life that every time you turn around, you always finding yourself falling. Guess what? You don't need to continue to try to be with them. Some people you need to cut off. Especially when you know, guess what? This is one of those booty call things. Hello? This is the person that whenever they call you, you already know how it's going down. They call you. They act like they ain't talked to you in such a long time. It's the holiday. They just trying to see how you doing. Hey, when we go out and get a bite to eat so we can catch up, you with your foolish self. Okay, whatever you say. You know, so next thing you know, you're going out, you're eating, you're laughing. Your God's down. He looking good or she looking good. Next thing you know, it's time to roll up. Now you find yourself in a compromising position. When you knew straight up, 
that the same thing happened when you get with this person over and over and over again. There was a friend of mine when I started trying to get myself together, coming off drugs, y'all. Let me tell you, this chick used to live in Baltimore. Whenever she called me on the telephone, and when I was in the process of trying to get my life together, when this chick would call me on the telephone from Baltimore, I would automatically get the bubble guts. When you smoke crack and things of that nature, certain things used to happen to your body when it was almost trying to get into the motion to go and get some. And so guess what? It would always happen when she would call. I was like, I can't even talk to her. It got to the point I realized I can't even talk to her because too much take place in the spirit realm just with a conversation with her. So even though we was friends for many years, my new life, trying to maintain my deliverance was more important. So guess what? It meant cutting a whole lot of people off. I had to get new friends. So sometimes in order to get delivered and stay delivered, there's some people you got to cut off on. And then another way to maintain your deliverance is you have to get some accountability partners in your life. But no, we don't want accountability partners. You want to know why? Because we grown. We don't need nobody telling us what we should or shouldn't do. I'm grown. I know God for myself. He speak to me too. So guess what? I don't need no accountability. I'm all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I ain't saying nothing else on that one. But the problem is too many people don't have anybody that they're accountable to. See, you got to be able to give somebody true access into your life to be able to let you know when you're cutting up, when you're foul, when you're out of order and some. You don't need, uh, uh, you know, and it's a trip because you know when you start lying to people, you really know you messed up then. When people start asking you, so well, what's going on with you? Have you slept with them? Have you, have you been getting high lately? And you start saying, oh, no, I, I ain't sleep with them. Oh, no, I ain't been getting high. Knowing you have, that shows you how deep in bondage you are. Amen? But you need to give somebody that type of access to your life that can call out what's inside of you. That can call you. Hey, that can pop up over your house when they sense in their spirit that you cutting up. You need to give somebody that type of access in your life that you're going to be honest to. And you ain't going to catch an attitude when they correct you. Let me tell you something. When somebody point out our wrong ways, we don't like it. Nobody likes to be corrected. But if you have a person that you know really loves you, that really cares about you, and only wants the best for you, if they bring out any negativity in your life, it's not to hurt you, but it's to help you. But we grown, and we don't need nobody to tell us what to do, how we do it, what we should do, or what we shouldn't do. So guess what? That's why so many people ain't delivered. And then, hey, Minister Juan Rosa, another way of maintaining, something else that's key to maintaining your deliverance is you have to refuse to flash the devil by running around spiritually butt naked. Hello? See, you know how it was. A person had a flashy, they're having an overcoat. Then all of a sudden they open it up and flash you. And they butt naked. You need to stop flashing the devil running around spiritually butt naked. You need to have on the whole armor of God every day. Amen? Getting up half dressed spiritually. But you need to be properly dressed every day because you are in a battle 24-7. So constantly be dressed. And then another way to maintain. Hey, Mama Harris. Another thing to maintain your deliverance is you have to get to a place where you refuse. Somebody say refuse. Amen. When I say that, that means just type the word on the screen. Somebody say refuse. Hello? You need to refuse to hook your flesh up. Refuse to hook your flesh up. No good thing dwells in the flesh. Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 4. It says, 
and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Hello, in my version, stop tripping, wake up, it's time to get serious and get busy, amen? Stop playing around with your Christian walk, stop being content, being a carnal Christian, stop being hot or, or, not, or being lukewarm, get even hot or cold, it's time to wake up. You've been saved too long to be dealing with the same thing. Over and over and over again. Guess what? Ten years down, you still struggling with getting high? No, you ain't struggling. You are content in your sin. Ten years into your walk, five years in your walk, you still struggling with fornicating? You ain't struggling. You are constantly doing it and it's taking control of you. You ain't struggling. See, when there's a struggle for it, there's a real war going on. But all these people that's talking about they struggling, you ain't struggling at all. I don't know who you think you fooling, but you ain't struggling. You just want to say that because it sound right in the church arena, but you ain't struggling, boo-boo. And so it says, it's time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is near than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry, wild parties, and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Amen. You say that's why it's so important to nip the stuff, because the struggle will overtake you real fast. Yes, it will. So it says, not in lewdness and in lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the key part to the verse. And make no provisions to fulfill the flesh. No, make no provisions to make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. You know, if you live in holy and trying to live holy, and let's just say you was an alcoholic. And you, that's Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. And let's just say, if you know you're trying to live holy and you ain't trying to be an alcoholic no more, and you done gave up drinking, let's say it's been a month. <laughs> that's a long time for some people. Let's just say it's been a month. But the Jones hit you and you want to drink. Do you know you're going to have to make provisions for the flesh in order to fulfill it? Especially if you done cleaned out all your cabinets. You don't have nothing in the refrigerator or in the cabinets to drink on. You're going to have to literally leave your house, get in your car, go to a liquor store and make the purchase. Go back home, get your cup, pop and, and drink it. It is so many steps that we do to fulfill the lust of the flesh. The sinful things that we do don't just happen like that. We put things into effect. That's why I used to tell ladies all the time. I said, ladies, let me tell you something. If you're a Christian woman and you are dating and you're dating with a purpose, but it's one of those days where your flesh is kicking and you're supposed to be going out on a date that night with your, your significant other and you already know it because you done got dressed and you putting on your just-in-case panties. Hello. I, that's what I call them, your just-in-case panties. Because guess what? You feel in some kind of way anyway. So just in case your clothes come off, you want your bra and your underwear to be cute. Amen? So you're just in case. When you do that, you already in the wrong mindset. Right then and there, you need to call that individual and say, I can't even go out with you tonight and not even explain it. Because you got to be real with yourself and what's going on inside of you. Because you got to make provisions to fulfill the flesh. There's things you got to do. So we need to realize and be so in tune to ourselves, put these things in order in our life. And guess what? We will then be people that walk in deliverance for real. I walk in deliverance for real. Amen. I'm not saying that I have arrived or anything of that nature, but come on y'all. I know who I was. I know all the stuff that I dealt with, but I'm telling you, the only thing that's keeping me is God. But I had to be real with how messed up I really was. I had to realize that I had some real problems. You cannot get help again until you first realize you got some problems. Then I had to hate how I was not pleasing God with the life that I was living. And put some things in action. 
And so, I'll close again. This is the final list. I'm just going to run back the list without elaboration on how to maintain your deliverance. First of all, once you get set free from your strong man, you can't remain clean but empty. Fill up with God. Always remain on the lookout for the enemy because he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour at all times. Submit to God and resist the devil. Cut some folks off in your life because that's going to be necessary in order to maintain your deliverance. Get some accountability partners in your life. Submit to somebody for real and refuse to flash the devil by running around spiritually butt naked. Put on the whole arm of God every day and refuse to hook your flesh up. Amen. And so the word of God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. The bottom line is we got to humble ourselves, realize what's going on with us, make a decision to want to change. And trust me, God can do it. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. Amen. So I pray that you all have been blessed. This has been a long scope, but y'all, I had a, I had a teach tied up on the inside of me. Amen. Bible study was canceled last night, even though I wasn't teaching. Minister folks wasn't te was teaching, but Bible study was canceled. I was going to have my uh, uh, Shepherd Connection Fellowship today with the pastors, but I didn't want to take a chance, you know, with refreezing the night. We already know church going to be closed on Sunday, but guess what? Uh, uh, nothing but the Truth Ministries. We may not be able to get into the church building, but we still will be having church. Because y'all know me, I will hook up the Ustream and the Periscope and the word of the Lord will go forward. And guess what? And you will still be able to sow into the house of God because we have all kinds of technology and nothing but the truth ministries. Hello? <laughs> so anyway, the snow, the blizzard is coming tomorrow. You all be safe. Does anybody have a question before I get off? Before I actually log off, I want to give anybody an opportunity to ask me a question, um, you know, before I get off. And like I said, this scope was birthed off of something that I saw John Eckert talk about because a lot of people was asking questions about how to get set free. How do you get uh, walk, get away from addiction? How do you get delivered? So uh, any questions before I go? Thank y'all for dealing with me with my little ponytail. Y'all know I always have my curls, but. You know, it is what it is. I'm still cute, though. Hello. Thank you, too. I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed. Amen. Uh, real, that's all I can be. Amen. Uh, we, we need people today need people that are real. They need people that they can identify with. Okay. So, question. How often should leaders go through deliverance in a year? Well, when it comes down to it, as a leader, that shouldn't be something that you have to really be going through. Because uh, if you're a leader, you need to already be delivered. See, the problem with the church today is we got too many people in leadership positions that ain't delivered. They didn't get properly processed before they took on the title. That's why the church is messed up today. People need to be processed, and part of that process is rubbing lives closely with somebody so that all your issues can come out. You can get delivered so that you can stand before the people in the right spirit. So it should not be a thing where yearly they should have to go through deliverance. And then once you are in a position of a leadership, you need to have intimate groups where you have places where you can be honest and real with some of the struggles that you may go through. Because you're a leader, you may still go through struggles and temptations, but you don't have to go give in to them. So you need to have a safe place where you can tell somebody, this is my struggle. So yes, there's a difference between struggling and needing deliverance. See, I only need deliverance when I'm caught up in something. I can struggle all day. I can have an anger problem and struggle. I say, you know, struggle with wanting to just go off on somebody, but that don't mean I'm going to do it. So is there a protocol doing deliverance for a person? Yes, uh, there's a protocol. Every situation is different. Um, you have to really be led of the Lord as to, uh, first of all, identify what you're dealing with. Sometimes deliverance ministers have a tendency to think that you deal with all people the same way. Let's just say a person that's a drug addict. Every single drug addict is not the same. So you can't have a one, two, three method to deal with every single person. 
And so um, there's deliverance classes that can be taken um, with any situation. It's always a matter of being led by the spirit because there is no cookie cutter way for deliverance. Um, um, there's no cookie cutter way. You know, and so you have to really be trained by somebody that actually walks in deliverance. Uh, there's a lot of books on deliverance to really um, help you if that is something that you know that uh, you flow in. Um, one of the things, the Lord really taught me a lot of different things, but I do a lot of studying as well. Um, and so every situation is different. Every situation is different. You got to know how your church flow. You got some churches that don't even deal in deliverance and it's sad, but you know, every church is different. Everybody doesn't flow in the same gift. So if your church is not a church that deal with deliverance, don't be upset. I'm talking about the deliverance on the type where they may cast out demons and things of that nature. Everybody's not anointed to do that. So don't think that your church is not a good church because they don't deal with deliverance. Everybody's gift isn't the same. The problem in the churches is that we don't have enough people operating in their gifts in one local house. See, because the pastor may not be a person who flows in deliverance, but you may got some prophets and other people in your house that flow with deliverance, that are, have the ability to discern spirits, cast out spirits, different things of that nature, even to be able to walk people through. See, you got to be able to have the right people to assign to people in your church that are in bondage to walk them through stuff. So it's different types of deliverance. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else before I get off tonight? Any other questions? All right. I know sometimes you get people a chance to talk. All right. So anyway, you say, hey, you bet it goes down in my service. Amen. You know, sometimes you never know what's going to take place. You know, uh, um, you never know what's going to take place in the services, how the Holy Spirit is going to move. Another thing people got to understand, the Holy Spirit don't move the same way all the time. You can have a day in your church where you all never even get to the word because the gifts of the spirit are flowing like never before. But that ain't every Sunday. See, what's happening today is people are caught up in the prophetic taking place in the church. They caught up in how the gifts of the spirit will be moving sometimes. So they, they want that every single service. And that ain't going to happen every single service. But what happens when, that, when it don't take place, you got people today to say God wasn't even moving today. You know, but if God moved, oh, God was so powerful and mighty. No, no, no. No church service is the same all the time. But there are also leaders that don't allow those gifts to operate in their church. Yes, there's some leaders that don't allow to operate because some of them are unlearned as far as how gifts operate. Some leaders, unfortunately, can be intimidated by others that have gifts. And it shouldn't be like that. We're the same body. We're on the same team. We need to be working together. See, me, and then with me, I know one of my assignments is to teach people in all the different areas, to train people in different areas. I, I have to understand how to train the evangelist. I have to understand how to train the prophet, the teacher, the apostle, and the pro uh, pastor. I have to understand all of this. That's part of my assignment. That's not everybody's assignment. You know, you would think that, but it's not everybody's assignment. I have never seen my pastors lay hands on anyone. And you're not alone, baby girl. I mean, there's some churches that never do it. And again, it has a lot to do with the gifts that they flow in. So it's not that they're not a good pastor. They may be a pastor with a strong teaching anointing. I love Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley probably ain't never cast a demon out, lay hands on nobody. Nobody probably ever got slain in the spirit in the church. But you're talking about a man with a powerful word. That's a teaching man of God. So every church is different. What I'm looking forward to in this hour is that all of the gifts begin to operate in the churches. Amen. All of them, because it's needed in like never before in all the churches. He is a fret, straight teacher. I guess you mean a straight teacher. Yes, he's a straight teacher. And so that's what we got to be praying for, y'all. So again, don't look at your pastor like they're not great and things of that nature, like your church ain't good and things of that nature. Sometimes you got to know how a person operates in their gifts. I'm a person. I love the gifts. I geek off the gifts. I geek off of the uh, fivefold, uh, uh, the motivational and the uh, 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 spiritual gifts. Amen. The uh, manifestation gifts. I geek off of all the gifts. Everybody ain't into that. So it has a lot to do with your leader's gift and what title or what they operate, operate in it as to how they flow. Amen? Yeah, geek. Geek. All right, y'all. I'm gone. Y'all be safe. We got the blizzard of 2016 coming tomorrow. So take care. I'm so glad you enjoyed uh, 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 the scope tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.